Let's recall the construction of definite integral as the limit of Riemann sums. Let f be a function defined on a closed interval a b, where a is less than b. The interval a b is the set of all real numbers that are greater than or equal to a and less than or equal to b. Step 1. Divide the interval a b into n subintervals of equal length. Each subinterval has the length delta x, which is b minus a divided by n. Step 2. Choose sample points in those subintervals. Let x1 star be a sample point in the first subinterval. Let x2 star be a second sample point in the second subinterval. And so on. Let xn star be a sample point in the n subinterval. The sample points may be left or right end points of the subintervals, or they may be chosen in a totally arbitrary way. Step 3. Consider the sum. f of x1 star times delta x plus f of x2 star times delta x, and so on, plus f of x n star times delta x. This is the Riemann sum that corresponds to this partition and this particular choice of sample points. The Riemann sum may be written in a more convenient way using the sigma notation, as shown below. Finally, the limit of these Riemann sums is the definite integral of f from a to b, assuming that this limit exists and gives the same value for all possible choices of sample points. If the limit exists and is independent on the choice of sample points, we say that the function f is integrable on the interval a b. When the function f is positive, then the definite integral is the area under the graph of f between a and b. On the other hand, when the function f is negative, then so is its definite integral. In this case, the absolute value of the definite integral gives us area of a shaded region. For example, the definite integral of the sine function from 0 to pi is 2. And this is the area under the function between 0 and pi. On the other hand, the definite integral of the same function but from pi to 2 pi is negative 2. So, to get the area of this shaded region, we need to take the absolute value of the integral, which is the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. If the function takes on both positive and negative values, then it is convenient to decompose the integration according to positivity of the function. For example, the definite integral of the sine function from 0 to 2 pi can be decomposed as the sum of the following two integrals. The first integral is the, the integral of sine from 0 to pi. And the second integral is the integral of the same function but now from pi to 2 pi. We know that the first integral is equal to 2. The second integral is negative 2. So the initially given integral is 0. Let's mention some general properties of definite integrals. Every continuous function on a closed interval is integrable. In fact, many more functions are integrable. For instance, a function f on an interval a b, having finitely many points of jump discontinuity at which all the left and right limits exist and are finite, is also integrable. But functions with infinitely many points of discontinuity may not be integrable. For example, the Dirichlet function defined on the closed interval 0 1 is not integrable because the limit of Riemann sums depends on the choice of sample points.